Okay, welcome to chemical bonding. As we spoke earlier, we talked about the electrons in the uh, outermost shell of the atom and uh, that those are described as the valence electrons. Uh, when it comes to bonding, uh, two, two atoms connecting together, there's really two things that can occur. They either, the two atoms come together to share, to actually fill up the valence shell, or uh, one atom can give up electrons to fill the, uh, to actually decrease so that it, its outermost shell looks filled, and the other atom that it's with will actually accept an electron so that it looks like it has a full shell or a full octet also. So there's two critical things. You either share electrons or you're taking and giving electrons. So let's talk about uh, some of those characteristics and in, in what we find in those. So when we start to deal with chemical bottoms, first of all, we have to talk about the valence electrons. So, uh, of course, we have valence electrons here. As we started to talk about periodicity, we kind of threw out some, some periodic trends, and, and here's where we need to kind of talk about what the importance of those periodic trends are. The first one is ionization energy, and, and ionization energy is the quantity of energy that is required to remove an electron from a neutral atom. And so if I go down and I grab this this little electron from here, it's, it's really kind of like playing a tug of war with that electron and, and how much energy I actually have to give off uh, when, I, when I pull that electron off. Uh, electron affinity, on the other hand, is the quantity of energy that is uh, that is uh, changed when an electron is actually received by an atom. So it's attraction for those electrons. When we think about affinity, it's it's how attracted we are to those, or how much energy we're uh, we're going to give off because we're excited to get that electron. And the last term is electronegativity. Electronegativity is um, when these two atoms, when two atoms bond together, it is the attraction for the bonding electrons. In other words, the electrons that tie these two things together. And electronegativity kind of gives us an idea of, uh, if you think of a tug of war, where the knot would would hang out most of the time. It's you know if if one has a higher electronegativity than the the electrons would tend to gather closer to that particular atom. Um, and as we look at the uh, periodic table, there's some characteristics that, that we see in the periodic table. And um, those characteristics are, um, if we think about it, the atoms that want the electrons the most, have the greatest traction for electrons, are these guys in that top right-hand corner. You know, things things like, flu actually the guy who wants the electrons most is fluorine. It actually has eight electrons in its outermost shell and would love to have one more, or seven, and would love to have one more. So that its electron configuration would actually look like neons. Um, oxygen would actually need two electrons to look like neon. Nitrogen would need three. And so what they'd want to do is combine with, with other atoms that would have that opportunity to give them that many electrons. Now on the other end of the scale, we have lithium, sodium, potassium, all those guys down this side. They like potassium here has 19. It's got one electron in its outermost shell. So if it was to give up one electron, it would kind of look like argon. It would have the same electron configuration. Now that same electron configuration is is determ is described as being isoelectric. Uh, in other words, their electron configurations are the same. And so potassium will become isoelectric by losing one electron. And if you look at chlorine here, chlorine could actually gain one electron and, and become isoelectric. And so we can get compounds like uh, potassium chloride, where potassium gives up an electron to chlorine, chlorine gains that electron, they both become isoelectric to argon. In other words, their electron configuration looks like uh, argons. All right. Now, when we have two atoms um, that have the same no or are almost at eight anyway, uh, if you look at these two atoms, uh, they could actually be on the kind of the tail end of the periodic table. They could be things like uh, chlorine or bromine or iodine. You know, they have seven valence electrons. What they tend to do when they bond together is they're going to they're going to overlap with a pair of electrons. And so what you see is this electron down here at the bottom on um, 
on one of them overlaps there's one and the one overlap and here's another overlap and when they do that uh, both atoms all of a sudden have this eight electrons or or they seem like they have a full valence shell and so if you count the electrons around this nucleus now you have one two three four five six seven and if I scroll down a little bit you'll see that last one and eight and of course on this other one we have the same situation there's one two three four five six seven and and that shared one is eight and so both of those guys have just become satisfied by combining those those eight electrons again the types of bonds here's that first one here here's that overlap which these guys are called covalent when they share electrons there we get that overlap those two atoms are bonded together because they're sharing that pair of electrons. Now on the other hand when we get to ionics, ionic bonds are going to be created. We have an atom here with one electron and if you think about things with one electron that would be things like sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. It'd be that first column of the periodic table. It'd be all these guys down here and they have one valence electron. Again I'm, I'm ten tending to use a halogen here which halogens are remember fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and astatine those guys have seven valence electrons now for the no or for the uh, alkali metals to be perfect they really need to give up this one electron and for the halogen to be perfect they need to gain one and so what happens is this alkali metal gives up that electron it wanders over and attaches itself here now in that process though uh, as that electron leaves this atom becomes positive because it has an electron leaving which electrons are negative the proton the nucleus of the atom is positive and so by removing one negative charge we have one more proton than we do electron therefore it makes it slightly positive now on the other hand this now has one more electron than it does proton and so this atom over here becomes negative and these two atoms stick together be almost like magnets because of the charge or their what's called their electrostatic attraction now when we create something like this we actually get what's called a cation and an anion um, as we looked on the last screen I didn't really describe that I'll flip back the thing that becomes positive is called a cation okay so this guy becomes the cat ion and his partner the negatively charged one becomes the anion okay and so anytime you have a negatively charged particle we're dealing with an anion anytime we have a positively charged particle we're dealing with a cation so when we get to this next screen our atom here has seven valence electrons but this guy has two valence electrons now the atom on the right really only wants one more electron but the atom in the middle the green atom would really like to get rid of two electrons so what what's required is that we pick up another atom so this electron moves over here and sure enough it makes this atom uh, negatively charged but this still wants to give away an electron so what we can do or what actually happens is a second one of this variety of atom or in this particular case a halogen comes in and joins on the other side and this little electron moves over to it and if we can find it dropping behind here it attaches here this atom becomes slightly negative or it becomes negative and this actually comes up with a positive two charge because now it lost two of its electrons and so it has two more protons than it does electrons and those two outside uh, atoms attach now this could be things like magnesium chloride MgCl2 where magnesium has two valence electrons that if we look at the periodic table again we can look and see those guys that have tend to have two valence electrons that would be this column here and so if you look down this column this would be two valence electrons so they would tend to take on that positive two charge again these fluorine chlorine all this column would tend to take on that negative one and so if you think about it we could take magnesium and we could take chlorine and it would take two chlorines for every one magnesium because 
magnesium wants to give up two electrons, chlorine only wants one, and so we need two chlorines. And so that's that's the typical type of bonding that we're going to deal with. Um, well, that's the only type of bonding we have, either covalent or ionic. And uh, it's either sharing electrons or it's taking and giving electrons. So ionic is giving up electrons or taking electrons, where you end up with two charged particles. And covalent is sharing electrons.